Good morning, I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Today we're live from the Pyramid and Par Hall in Warrington. Welcome everyone to The Big Questions. <laughs> On Tuesday night, eight men were executed by firing squad in Bali for drug offences. They refused to wear blindfolds and sang hymns as they walked to their deaths. Two of the men, uh, the Australians Andrew Chan and Mayuran Sakamuran, had been convicted of leading the Bali Nine, a drug ring which smuggled $4 million worth of heroin out of Indonesia. Is the death penalty ever justified? Uh, Imam and broadcaster Ajmal Masrur. Ajmal, um, Pope Francis, a man I'm, I'm sure uh, you admire, uh, recently, in 2012, he said, uh, today the death penalty is inadmissible, no matter how serious the crime committed. It's very important for us to consider what he is saying and what others are saying. However, there are questions that we need to still ask. Those people who are perpetrating the most heinous crimes around the world, including, for example, Andres Brevik, who killed 79 people in Norway, or the paedophiles who have been convicted of uh, crimes against children, others who have done horrendous crimes, including Hitler, Milosevic, responsible for 8,000 men and children killed in Srebrenica. What do you do with such people? What kind of punishment can you give so that you create a deterrent for others never to think about it? Is it a one. deterrent? One second. Would it stop them thinking one about it? One second. Deterrent for others not to do it again. And secondly, it's a, a corrective method by which societies can heal. I agree that in my faith, in Islam, Punishment is very strongly given, but the verse of the Quran that talks about punishment also actually concludes by saying, however, however, forgiveness is better for you. So there is a human element of compassion that is missing. The bigger problem that we have currently is our, ju our, our justice system is failing to punish people adequately for the smallest crime to the biggest crime. There are disproportionate sentences that are given out for crimes, and that just makes a mockery of the system. So There's no chance of redemption if you kill somebody. Two of these people sang hymns, mm. and they were being convicted for the people and put to death because of the people they once were. What Not, kind of... What kind you of, let me finish? Yeah, sure. Gone. No. <laughs> not, not the people that they became. So you left out, you leave out no opportunity for change. I agree that that is the outcome. However, this is a, a discussion based around the world as a life on its own. There is a concept called the life hereafter, which is what the people of faith believe. So I believe there is a life hereafter. These people are not responsible just for taking drugs. They're drug dealers, traffickers blighting our communities, destroying children, our families. I've come across many young children who have become vegetable completely because of drugs addiction. You'd, exercise pe you'd, so you'd saying, execute paedophiles, you I'm say. saying paedophiles who have been convicted, right. anyone who has committed heinous crimes... Rolf Harris? Should you'd, have be, exe you'd execute Rolf, you've executed let Rolf the, Harris? Let the court decide, not me. I'm not a judge. But that's your principle. I'm, I'm giving like my that, yeah. principle outline. Would you is, execute the killers of Lee Rigby? As far as I'm concerned, mm. anyone. Mm. who is a murderer and committing heinous crime right. should be put to the ultimate pu punishment for the society to learn and create a process of healing. OK, OK. <laughs> OK, let's see what other people think. Sure. Sean Atwood, former drug dealer, spent six years uh, in a supermax prison in Arizona. What about this argument that it would be a deterrent? It's not a deterrent. America has got some of the highest homicide rates in the world. And the states that have the death penalty have got the highest murder rates as well. And also, look at all the innocent people that are getting killed through it. Um, they, in these states, <laughs> these gov um, governors of these states love to roast a black person right before they go into election. That's how they get their votes. DNA now has shown over 200 people um, have been exonerated through DNA. Dozens were on death row. My lawyer got one guy off death row, Ray Crone, the snaggletooth killer. Waitress was found dead near a bar. Mm -hmm. He'd been in the bar. His, she had uh, DNA at the scene and a bite mark on her leg. DNA didn't match. Bite mark didn't match. State of Arizona paid $50,000 to an expert witness to say his teeth matched the victim. Mm. They gave him 5000 to defend himself. He went up, got found guilty. He was on death row for 10 years, almost executed him multiple times. Is in any way a deterrent? You've, you've been there, you've spoken to these people. In, in, would it work 
in any way to stop people, or, to, or as Ajmal said, to make people think twice. No, it doesn't, because when people are on drugs, or they're high, or they're committing crimes, they're mentally ill, they're thinking they're not going to get caught. I was on drugs when I was running this ecstasy business. I was thinking I was not going to get caught. We were joking, we were above the law. And in response to you, it was nice of you to extrapolate the world's, you know, super villains from, from uh, history to make your case. How about these ladies that are getting executed for um, getting their heads cut off for sorcery in Saudi Arabia? Can I ask what you about those people? Can I ask you? Can I ask you? Can I ask you? Uh, I think the point that you made earlier on is very valid, and that is, if the legal system is racist in its uh, makeup, if it's unfair, if there are problems, then it, of course, must not be done. In in my faith, the execution can only be done when it is hundred percent. Proven that this person is guilty. And when is that? Uh, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. How is that the, possible? Uh, DNA? Uh, well, let, let me ask DNA. you a question. Yeah, of course, let me ask you a question. You said earlier on that you were a drug dealer. Yep. How many lives have you destroyed? How many children have you destroyed in that process because you wanted to make quick money? And how many young people actually think it's good to do drugs unless we find a very strong sh deterrent? Sh like with. you won't be stopped. I was one of those young people and I did wrong and I can't change my how past. How many lives? Now I go into school and I've stopped over 100,000 young people in the last five years to put them off getting involved in drugs and crime. How many young people have you spoke to? Hundreds, thousands of young people right. I speak to. I've just come back from Norway addressing a crowd of young people in a school, telling them about the morals and ethics that are needed in life. Look, I am for preserving life. Dr. Hannah I believe, I believe if you take a life, innocent life, it's wrong. We need to have our judicial process and our justice system correct. Talk go to, go to Saudi Arabia and look in a woman's face as she's getting her head cut off and you yeah, say well, that. Yeah, but, but, you know, let me speak to Hannah. Um, th that, that line there from Ajmal saying that only if we're absolutely sure. Does that resonate with you? The judge sentencing the Birmingham Six said his only regret was the death penalty wasn't available to him because he felt they should be executed. <laughs> Sixteen years later, they were as most people know, released from the Court of Appeal. There was, it was terrible what had happened to them, they were deeply damaged by it, but at least there was a possibility that they could be released. Had they been executed at the time, they would undoubtedly have become martyrs for Irish republicanism, which would have had an enormous effect on the conflict in Northern Ireland, and a terrible, terrible wrong would have been done. There is no academic evidence that supports the idea that the death penalty is a deterrent. It damages us as a society, because it's coming down to their level. Charlie, you heard us. there from Sean, who was in a supermax prison there. There are a, 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 huge amounts of people there who are innocent but are on death row. Well, but the system is designed for problems, to, to get rid of problems before they happen. There is a procedure of, uh, of appeals that goes on for about 10 years to make sure. And many of the cases that you, you cite of people who have gotten off doesn't mean they are innocent. They have not met the bar. That's how exactly it is. Have you ever been in the system? But again, the, but, but, the, but they get taken out before they get to the death chamber because of the appeal system. There's a greater chance if you are in a non-capital case going for a life sentence that you will die as an innocent person in jail because you do not have that super process. That's nice in theory. The governor, no, it's the, real. No, the, go the governor of Illinois instituted a moratorium on the death penalty after more people had left death row because they'd been exonerated than had been executed. With over a 50% failure rate, he said that system wasn't safe so to but, operate. But here's absolutely right. The system has failed. If we can get the system right, mm. and if we don't, don't get the system right, remember what I said, the bar is very high. The compassion element is very important. Forgiveness is more important than anything else. However, we must not move away from the possibility of putting the most heinous criminals in the world, the ones I've mentioned, to that process. Otherwise, we are saying they can get away with murder and there is no punishment. Philip Blond. Yeah, the trouble with the death penalty is it's a way of not dealing with issues rather than, rather than dealing with issues. America, America has a terrible problem with the bottom third of its society. Take a train from New York uh, to Washington, you go through Baltimore. It's worse than any third world situation I've ever seen in my life. Desolation, poverty, it's a criminal culture that has produced, produced this level of, of depravity. And all America does is imprison black person after black person, kills them whether they're innocent or not, as a way of not dealing with problems. <clears throat> What we have to do is recognise that if we have the death penalty, it's a way of not confronting evil, not asking where does evil come from, and not engaging as a society with how we cure these systemic evils. OK, let's go to the audience. Lots of hands are up. And uh, first of all, a guy at the back with a lilac shirt. Yeah, it is. Um, Hi. 
I just want to go to what was said in the front row. First of all, I admire you fully for changing your life and what you're doing now. I'm currently a primary school teacher. And one of the reasons why I think you definitely am against the death penalty is if we had have executed you for your crimes, how many lives have you, have you caused? That's a problem. I think that's a disgraceful comment. How many lives have you saved because of well, not Ashmael's being given... Well, comment was disgraceful. Yeah. How many lives have you saved because you wasn't executed and you've been now going around schools? How many lives have you saved but, through the reform and through doing this in schools? Thank you. And, and along there, at the back, yeah, right about the beard, yeah. For There's um, evidence that um, people in countries where the death penalty ha exists there's no higher or lower or correlation between punishment and the actual thing happening. So I think it comes down to whether you think that that person deserves that and who are you to judge whether someone should live or die. I don't well, think that's fair, really. OK. But we have uh, to make judgments, uh, Nicky, uh, at some stage. Charlie Wolf. Yeah, there, there are situations where the scales of, of justice must balance, and if a crime is that heinous, we as a society have to speak up. Now, I'm not saying you go and, and uh, uh, kill, execute people for parking tickets, obviously. Drug dealing? But, I'm not even sure on drug dealing, but states have laws as to what are capital crimes. I think the Lee Rigby case is, is an excellent one. There was something that was heinous. Right. There is no doubt as to who did it. And I think we have to make a statement. It is just but at a point where, where that's evil, the only way to balance those scales. Where does evil come from? If you'd killed Hitler, you wouldn't explain where Nazism co comes from. But that's killing, a, but killing, that's a different the, argument. killing the outcome no. doesn't stop the problem emerging. You have to have, what you have to do no. is look no. systemically at why we create a society that has such violence against that's children, mm -hmm. why we have a culture of death mm -hmm. from beginning to the end of life. That's, that's a and, fair and if point. you want to tackle crime, that's what you tackle. You tackle the cause, but, not the symptom. But, but from a public policy standpoint, the gentleman back mentioned about how many lives you probably have saved. But there's also the other side of how many people will further get killed. If you've killed once, there's a chance you will kill again. Many of the people in jail that are on murder charges have killed before and multiple times. So you have to say, is sacrificing one life going to save others? That's a public policy question that has to be dealt with. You mentioned Hitler. Hitler was killing by race. Black people are three times more likely to get executed in America than white people for yeah, the same crime. I, 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 I think that's, a get, that's true, but that does not take away the argument. The moral argument here is the one Philip has been saying. How do we get rid of evil from the world? It is not mutually exclusive, they're inclusive. You get rid of the evil by doing education program, by driving those campaigns, but, as it but stands, also but having now, the but those people on, in your world will be executed. You don't, yeah, but that's you don't get rid point. of that's evil by doing evil. There is a major moral issue here. Do you descend as a society to a place where you take life when somebody else takes life? I actually believe that there is a, a commandment, which I thought actually Charlie went along with, thou shalt not kill. Actually, and, if, and, and for me, the society which actually starts taking life in return for somebody else taking life is actually descending into a moral abyss because actually the possibility of repentance, forgiveness, renewal is all removed under those circumstances and it debases the society where capital punishment exists as we've seen in Indonesia in the last year. Do you know, do you know as a family man yourself, do you, if somebody like, you know, if Ian Brady or somebody like Robert Black, the child killer, were to have been executed, you wouldn't weep for one second. You wouldn't. You, it wouldn't I would trouble you. It would it trouble you? Because I would much rather we actually punish them by the de deprivation of liberty for the rest of their lives. And you that know, is the appropriate so, punishment for the rest in of any society. It can be for the rest and of their lives. Is, we have a is. sentence which is. I'm sorry, but le learn about our legal system in this country. There are a whole number of people who are in prison for the rest of their lives. And they have been given whole life sentences. The so the Ch Charlie, wait, 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 Charlie, we'll come back on that. When they are, you're still hearing stories about Myra Hinley getting married or, or, or Ian Brady doing something. These families are still suffering, but also just I, I, but when, <laughs> when alive, when still yeah, yeah, alive. Okay. But just to correct the bishop, the correct translation of the sixth commandment is "Thou shalt not murder." All right, it's not kill. I know it's been translated in the King James as "Thou shalt not kill," but if you understand the Hebrew, it's "Thou shalt not murder," well, I have which a is many... different. Uh, it's two bishops against you, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta I'm say, probably better at speaking the original Hebrew. I, I gotta say, yeah, hey, I can't come in. Yeah. I thought you were over, over here. Over here. It's Aramaic. Over here. Shush. Over here. I know this is a, a point that's been. 
put over time and time again, but I would just like to give the example of a parent and a child. If your child hits somebody, do you hit them as a parent to teach them that that was the wrong thing to do? Mm -hmm. It's hypocritical to kill people because they've committed a murder. I, I don't think it's right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can... I, think, I think a lot of the arguments that have been put forward today are actually um, t turning us away from the key issue here. And I think a lot of the time we let our emotion get involved. I can understand why the mother of a son who's been murdered would want to see that person dead. Of course. That's not to say it should happen. Mm. I'm sorry, the, the fundamental point here, whether it works as a deterrent or not, and I think there's a strong argument that you've said to say that it doesn't work as a deterrent, is the fact that it is just pure brutality and it has mm. no place in a civilised society mm. absolutely. like here or the US. Bishop Jonathan. Uh, absolutely. Just to take up that word um, brutality, if we participate by uh, exercising the death penalty in our society, we are contributing to the brutalising of society, exactly. which is the systemic problem we're dealing I, actually, with in the first I find place. It, I find it funny that everybody who's against the death penalty when I have a conversation and is in favour of life says, let them rot. Yes. So. I, I, the one of, one of my oh, not everybody no. says. No. Not everybody says. says let them rot. Bishop Jonathan, Jonathan the case. Let them rot. one of my responsibilities uh, as a bishop is indeed to visit uh, my colleagues who work as chaplains in prisons, and the work I see going on there in terms of trying to bring about some degree of redemption and change within the people exactly. there, even those who are lifers. I was in a prison last week. And beyond redemption? Uh, uh, well, no, not, no, not the, beyond the possibility of release, perhaps. No, even I mean, those who are going to be there till the day they die. There is still Some people are beyond redemption, aren't they? Well, no, no yeah. absolutely, no, not. absolutely not. The Yorkshire absolutely Rippers, not. there's still hope for the Yorkshire Rippers. There is still the possibility of real change in people's mm. lives, and one sees that happening mm. uh, through faith and through, through other means in terms of the excellent work that Mara goes on Henley turned to God, didn't she? Do you think she found redemption? Those, are, those cases like that are always hugely difficult. You don't know how genuine these things are. But mm. I believe, and our fundamental belief as Christians, is that no one is beyond the possibility of redemption. James Bloodworth. I think one of the, the, one of the problems here is that, that people are sh on this side of the debate are assuming that there's such a thing as 100% 100%, 100 certainty. I think occasionally there is, but most of the time when justice is, is carried out, there, are, there is a margin of doubt. And if someone's, there are instances of people being executed for things they, they didn't do. Mm. This, happens, this is happening repeatedly. Um, and, and one of the principles... And, 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 and DNA can become very easily yeah. contaminated. So, yeah, the, principle our justice, the, the, principle our, the principle our justice system is based on is that it's better to let ten guilty people off than to, innocent, than to execute one innocent, it, it, in, it, one innocent yeah. person yeah. in jail. That principle Ajma. is absolutely right. If there is any doubt, don't execute anybody. As far as I'm concerned, but I'm still saying the, the, the marker has to be always There's there. almost always and some I, element I, I, of that. I, understood, this is I the understand problem. that because we're human. I understand that. No, what I'm saying is we should, not, we should not, we should not confuse the idea. The idea is very simple. Human being by nature, we should have the right to redeem, to ask for forgiveness, to renew our life, to become better. Of course we have. But there are certain circumstances in our society, in our world, where crimes are so high in us, the punishment has to be the ultimate one. I'm saying only under such circumstances, court or a state can have that right. But, like, we all agree that punishment doesn't And I come back end. to paedophilia, for example. Yeah, okay. If it's absolutely certain somebody has... Uh, is, is a paedophile, you would think... If somebody has been abusing children, what would you yeah. do if it's your own child? I'd be, uh, I, I would want to rip them apart, but I want the, the law to stop exactly. me doing that. So, I want the law to take exactly. its own course. So, so <laughs> if the law says the ultimate punishment for somebody who is committing crimes against children so, is death, listen, I would say let the court decide. But my principle is like Your this. principle is a as far as they I'm should be executed. As far as I'm concerned, people should have the right to forgiveness, to redeem themselves. But ultimate crime would unfortunately result in ultimate punishment. So you'd you kill the mentally ill as well, would you? That's no, not, no, that's no, not no, the no, process. No, well, the, the fact, the the fact, the well, the fact is, many of these, people, Ill. Many of these people against are pedophiles are mentally yeah. ill. Well, and many, many, many serious murderers are actually in psychiatric units like Broadmoor, where Brady is. I mean, you know, the, the notion that somehow or other these people are suitable for execution because they have committed it willfully when we don't know their background, we don't know why they've done it and so on. I find it debases our whole society in a way of, uh, of handling people and, and judging people. Sure, last word. Clinton executed a guy who had the mental age of a five-year-old. He didn't know where he was going when he was getting executed. He had his last meal, he left his dessert in his cell because he thought he could come back and get it. And when they were putting the lethal injection cords in him, he thought he was getting a medical test and he helped them execute himself. And that was wrong. Mm. That murder was wrong. Yeah, but, but well, you, you said no, you said you, you, said not, see, you have not understood the we point. Have to, if there is we have to. We have to. We have two other simple. things to discuss, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to leave it there. Let's run it off by giving yourselves a round of applause for that. Thank you.